<laughs> but, yeah. but before we get into this matchup, I do want to talk a little bit about the, the New York subliners change. So it was interesting. I know we've discussed this on our podcast, Hard Points, quite a bit because the, the thing I struggle with the most is seeing a player of zero's pedigree and caliber yep. not being on a starting lineup. I think we all agree a change needed to happen. This team has not been performing. This team did not look like they were going to play up to par. It was just interesting that this is the change that went down. Zero out, happy end. Yeah, I, I don't know what went on internally. It, there it, has to be something we don't it know. It is still just a giant question mark to me. Uh, but yeah, uh, we're, you know, Happy hasn't competed in a long time. I mean, he, he he's done like local little tournaments and whatnot, but we haven't seen him at this stage in a very long time. The last time I remember commentating him in a pro league was with Cloud9 back in Black Ops 3. Since then, from my understanding, it has mostly been amateur team to amateur team. So he has not been at this level of competition for a long, long time. And the, I guess the part of the story that I like about this is this is like a, a chance to rejuvenate his career. This is a second opportunity to maybe eject some life, inject some life into his career. Now, I, I don't know if that's going to happen, but it'll be exciting to see what he's able to do this weekend. But uh, as the match is around the corner, I do want to look at the game field keys to victory. We're going to look at Dallas to start things off. Oh, sorry, New York to start things off. So uh, not shocked to see Happy being one of these. Yeah, Happy needs to have a, a good first impression and stop playing so hectic. I, I think what that comes down to is you, you just watch them on the map. It, it just seems like they, they're stressed, right? It just feels like they're stressed after they lose that first map. So for them to calm down. Uh, but yeah, happy to have a, a good first series. I mean, he's put in a tough spot against a very tough team. Well, the other side, let's take a look at the game fuel keys with Dallas as we'll fire through those as they've got some young players, maybe, maybe still trying to find their legs on the Dallas side of the stage. Can they come in and assert the dominant, the level of dominance? I think many thinks they should. Yeah, Shotzi needs to start hot and gain confidence. That's what we touch about. Shotzi, Illy, when are they going to hit that next level? Then Harpoint needs improvement. I mean, I think especially coming out hot against, you know, teams like Atlanta, teams like New York, if you're able to win that game one with how good of a search and domination team that you can be, you can set the precedent in the series. But to be able to compete with the best teams in the world, their hard point needs to be on point. The reason they have four losses, you have weaknesses in that game mode against teams like Atlanta, against teams like Chicago. Well, let's now take a look at the U.S. Army or U.S. Air Force quick scope. The key points for these teams. And Joe, while we look at this, I actually have a question for you. Sure. How the old pro league structure worked, there were a lot of reps, a lot of games, so many games played. Is it more difficult now for an Elie or Shotzi to find their legs with this structure? Like a little bit harder when you don't have that pro league in Columbus just grinding, grinding, grind? I don't think so, because also throughout the weekends, like these guys are practicing, right? Like that practice on land, there, there's a lot of time for them. I mean, the matches, there's more pressure, but to me, it's just that that should be able to get them in form a little bit quicker. But as we take a look at this, you can see Dallas Empire, 30 points. On the other side, New York, 10. And, and remember, for Dallas, you have four losses, but we've touched on it enough. Three of those are to Chicago, one to Atlanta. So they are 3-0 and against the rest of, uh, of the league. Well, now to the U.S. Air Force maps and modes. We're going to kick things off on Gunrunner, followed by Piccadilly, Hackney, Hackney, and Ramaza if those final two are needed. I, I think a lot of people were chalking up most of these first-round matchups as 3-0s and 3-1s. That is how the day has gone thus far. Joe, I think you're looking through the stats a little bit just now for these maps. Anything that really jumps out uh, to you? I, I mean, you look at maybe that game five, if New York can get there. Dallas hasn't played an official match yet. They're 0-0. Zero zero. Every, everything else looks good for Dallas. Hackney yard domination is one that, I mean, in New York, they were able to beat Atlanta on. Okay, well, it is time to introduce our teams. First up, let us welcome New York. Mr. Ice top, can face. Bongo top. He gets the damage in. He can't miss it. It's accuracy. Indeed, here we go. Oh, one versus three. He's like, no worries, bro. I got this. Continues to light it up. Come in and dominate the respawn. The New York subliners. Happy in. Zero out. We'll see if they can do it. But the Titans on the other side of the stage between New York and a victory. It is your Dallas Empire. Kill, but on the flank, it's going to be Clayser. And Clayser's going to get a bump. Four going to drop three. They're going to get the clear.
There they are, your Dallas Empire starting lineup. I think there is so much potential. I don't know that we've even gotten close to seeing what this team is capable of, which is kind of insane when you think about the fact they've been to a grand final, they've only lost to Huntsman and FaZe, but I just do not think we've seen a glimpse of what Illy and Shotzi are capable of yet on this roster. I, I think the best thing for Dallas is the, the fact that the form you have seen Krim and Clay in, right? Like, they have played well, even against Chicago and Atlanta and, like, hard points. They've been dropping bombs in those AR positions. So I, I think that's good because if you had a question mark, it's like, can the vets continue to play and perform at a high level? And they have been so far. Now you're looking at the young guns. Now you're looking at Coach Rambo to help mentor those guys. But don't we all think there needs to be some sort of shift, though? Like, it, it should be those guys dominating the game. From a stat standpoint, it should be them. Well, in, in this game, I think it has been pretty AR heavy at the top. But you see our best teams in the world. Yes, they, they should be able to drop some bombs a refresher on how Group A and Group B is looking thus far on the bracket here at the home series presented by Los Angeles. But I do want to take a look at some of the hard point stats heading into this first map between Empire and the Subliners. You got to think Empire heavily favored to go through here and face phase, which will be their what the first time they played since Minnesota, and I believe that was a 3-0. Yeah. yeah. And that's when, you know, Empire just kind of came and it got smoked. Since then, I think, I think we all agree they, they've improved drastically. But I think they need to make a statement here against a team that's coming in with a change, a team that has not looked that strong. They need to make a statement. Neither has been stellar in Hardpoint, though. Yeah, I, I, I mean, we keep harping on it. I don't want to remember that four and seven. Who knows how many of those losses are, are to the best teams in the world. But yeah, for New, New York, yeah, three like and five, five are probably the Huntsman, right? Yeah, I, I mean, for New York, three and five with the talent you had on this roster, I think that's a big surprise. For New York, I think one of the bigger disappointments we've had so far throughout this season. Well, let's say subliners. Let's say it was a big internal thing, right? And it was just people bumping heads. It was not working out with zero. It's gameplay, but it's more internal. How much do you think if they get along better with happy and things are going smooth, how much better can they get? I mean, we've always seen that, right? It's just sort of like it, if you're happy, like you're, you're going to be performing. If you're, if you're happy, happy, we're happy, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, you're going to be performing better. I think especially just looking at this team, like a guy like Temp, like you, you know what you're going to get out of him. If he's not in a good mood, that team's going to be brought down a lot. I, I think the veterans like attach and Zuma, they'll deal with whatever they have, but it's it's the other side of it. Accuracy and temp for me, they need to be put in good moods. With with the top amateur players that are on the market and yes, the fact no, that Zero's on the bench, know. how long do you think we see this roster? Uh, could be this could be the only day. Okay. They might go own two today and we see a new New York at the next event. Oh, not only day, so you mean the only weekend. Just this is the only week. We said only day, I was like, they're changing for tomorrow? Oh well they might not make it till tomorrow. That's what yeah, I'm saying. Yeah, they yeah, might yeah, not yeah. play tomorrow. Gotcha, gotcha. Uh, I mean we've heard those rumors that Right? The, the roster's already on the move. This is the only time you're going to see Happy. It's just so they can get to that new, new Yeah, roster. nothing official, but there's been a lot of speculation about yep. changes coming for this team. So I tend to agree with you. Could be the only time we see this roster. But now if they come out and dominate, they get to a top four or a grand final. Who the hell knows what's possible? But similar to like what we saw with Florida, you've got a tough first match to get into to see if you're able to do it. They're going to go right up against Empire, a top three team in the game. And of course, we're gonna start with Happy. We wanna see what he's gonna be able to do over the course of this, is he's a, he's a man that needs to step it up, fill in some big shoes behind Zero, go to the bench. Yeah, and if you're not familiar with Call of Duty's of the past, Happy has always been an aggressive player, but one thing, he's always had a bit of a swagger to his game, right? Like, he is pure movement. He loves to move around the map, so it, it'll be fun to watch him back on this stage. But it reminds me that's what we hear. I heard about Shotzi a lot when yeah. he was kind of coming up in this game. Like he's more worried about his movement on the map than he is anything else at times, which is how I remember commentating Happy. Like just nutty movement. You got to think with some of the mechanics in this, he might be able to work that into his favor. Yeah, yeah. He was the guy like setting free run records in Black Ops 3. Yep. Like if you guys remember free run, like Happy was the guy. Like is that what it was run. called? I'm yeah, trying to think of what that mode was yeah, called. Free run. Okay. That was cool. I like forgot about that until I think you or somebody brought it up in the yeah. green room the other day. It's a nice start from Subliners, though. About to go up 20 as we get ready to transition over to our next hard point. You can see everyone vying for control of that bottom right side of the map. There's a pinch opportunity for Subliners, but it will be Empire. That is there first. Accuracy and Zuma cut them down, though. Who's that last man remaining kind of set up really deep in the back? I think that's Clayster that's going to have his work cut out for him. He's going to get swarmed. Big kills there from Subliners. 
and they'll get set up. Yeah, this is huge for New York. I, I mean, you, you spawn on the side of the map that you want if you're Dallas. You don't get a ton of time off the first, and that's okay, but you're supposed to set up for second, and this is what I was talking about. Yes, New York has a change, but there is so much individual talent on this team when you look across the board, and you're starting to see it right now. Attach with a great start. Zuma 9-3 and three, already starting to go off in a big lead going the way of New York. Such a magnificent job chaining these together, but we'll head over to mine carts in about 15 seconds. You see the white arrows on the minimap starting to rally across. Getting into vent room will be that number five, which is Zuma, as he's trying to get early position. He actually gets gunned in his one-on-one -on -one versus Hoop. Another interesting part of this matchup, too, is all the talk about talk about Temp and Hoop. Are they going to win together? Who's going to win first? We know they're best friends kind of in and out of games, so... There's a bit of a friendly, I guess you call it, friendly-ish rivalry there between these two squads just based on that relationship. Krim set up inside, just watching the cross. Nice shots with okay. the MP5 on accuracy. I, I, I would imagine he had some help there. The player was a little I weak, so. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> But he pushes through the front of mine car. Oh, if you saw Killer recently, just depending on the skin you have in the yeah, what is he have? triple Can damage? Can write that down? Yeah, jot that down in your notebook. Try like triple what? damage you had? Triple damage. <laughs> <laughs> Was that the default? This <laughs> oh, Lord help us. Subliners. Still up 20 as they try to pressure in for the break, but it's who with the movement back and forth, the dance, the finesse. Yeah, I mean, this has just been a great hold so far for Dallas I until this point. You haven't even had a contest or anyone even in the hill from New York. Usually you have a little back and forth action, but they were so far pushed out that they were able to get themselves back to the team. So now a 13 point lead as we head on over to crates. Empire, good job getting back into it. It's a really slow start for Illy, but also Clay. Clay is two and 10. Like that reminds us sort of of what sent map one in our first series that we did, but he really turned it around. I, I don't know if Clay belongs in the conversation with Simp right now for his game-changing playmaking ability at this stage of his career, but he's definitely going to have to turn it around. Clay, though, he kind of answers the call. I think he got two or three before he finally dropped, but Subliners now building this lead open once again outside crates. It's accuracy, soaking up the time, setting up with the M4. And I think I think as much pressure as Happy is under, I think accuracy is the guy that might have the next behind that because there are a lot of us that thought, well, Zero is kind of a natural AR. Zero can transition to that M4 role. Accuracy to the bench. He collided a little bit with Tim we heard last year. Like, I think that made sense to a lot of people. So do you think maybe accuracy is feeling a bit of pressure here? To I mean, I think if you look at sort of the main ARs and the stats, right? There's only, what, 12 ARs in, in the league, league. Like, that's one that could potentially you, you could gun for. That's been the talk of kind of the amateur community and the pro community too. Like, yeah, it's almost like players are trying to be flex players, trying to be sub players, because suddenly you've got four positions to buy for. Whereas if you're just a main AR, there's just not many spots. There simply aren't. Subliners, though, still hold on to this narrow victory. But now, as we head over to Warehouse, a good chance for Empire to maybe pluck away at this entire lead. Yeah, I, holding I, the front. I, I'll tell you what, though. Like, when, when Dallas is set up, New York hasn't even gotten close to it. You look at Minecart, you look at this one as well. They haven't even contested those hills. So when Dallas has rotated besides the second hill we saw early on in that rotation, you didn't see much at New York's presence. So that that is really where the lead comes in now. As we head into this second rotation, it feels like Dallas now in control. And that was a stat that we saw getting tweeted out by our good staff buddy, JP, kind of between the last event. This one is how some teams have been so strong at breaking into hard points, like a phase. They do it like double the rate of other teams. Some teams are better at holding, like Huntsman, where they get the early setup, they're great at locking it down. So if you're seeing the early holds from Empire, more pressure on that rotation to have it set up, get a strong setup and dominate the time. But now as we focus on our second set of rotations, has Clay turned it around at all? 10 and 14, so yeah, from two and 10 to 10 and 14, he's definitely stepped it up. Yeah, I think that's just due to that warehouse rotation, right? They just had such control. It's easy for him to set up with an AR. He's constantly not fighting into those hills. We talked about Shotzi a lot, 22 and 17 from him. On the other side, it's pretty even around the board. Happy the only player negative on the New York side. So you would expect a lead from them. They're not fighting for the time, but as you look at that mini-map, you're going to see all those yellow arrows set up 
for this depot hill you have one player in crim trying to work you up mid track but here comes the first push from the dallas empire and crim somehow finds two kills that's going to start to push and that's going to be four down the pressure about to be here right away for dallas can subliners hold on here comes Empire soaring in. A little bunny hop from Hook. We can't actually connect in the shots. Next up will be Illy. Zuma takes out both inside and subliners. Behind the five spree from Zuma. Maybe some shaky shots from Empire. They get all the kills to hold on. Empire did a great job getting the first wave. I just don't know if they got another kill once they actually got into depot. Yeah, but here's the thing. When you get that first wave, because the spawns are so close, you can continuously put the pressure on, right? For New York, what you're trying to do is get the first set of kills and then get mid trash control, get a little bit pushed out towards bathroom, but that doesn't happen. But yes, from the inside, they're able to lock it down. The lead change comes their way. With 10 seconds left for Dallas, you're going to head back to minecart, where this was such a good hold for them on that first rotation. They've already got two set up on those side tracks. But look at the collapse coming in now. How's the timing going to work for subliners? Tim tries to pick up mid-map. And his two teammates go to get the hit across. Will he be able to rally back in time? Illy just soars in. Illy actually gets both. So Tim comes in from the help from mid. He gets cut down. Big play there from Illy, who's been slow to start this game. And early control now from Empire. But it's just been a story of 20-point leads. Like, Subliners up 20, Empire up 20, just back and forth we go as no one finds any huge amount of separation. Behind the smoke, Subliners try to get the next swarm on in. Try to get up close and personal, they're able to do it. Temp with two, accuracy with two. It's C6, Crim6 in the back that has to try and hold on, but he gets flanked by Mr. Flank himself. It's Zuma that gets the kill, but it's only gonna be one before he falls. With the little time remaining, I mean, we're going to be pretty close to a tie game once this hard point set and done. Yeah, I mean, when the dust settles, it's very similar to the first rotation throughout this these hills. I mean, the 10-point lead comes in, but if you're in New York, you see what they're trying to do on this rotation. They're trying to flip spawns right away. But Dallas, they're playing for that, that fifth hill warehouse just so early. They're trying to hold on to those spawns, and with that, the first 10 seconds goes to New York without any pressure. Well, yeah, they should get some easy well, yeah, shots early time. Flank. Considering how much emphasis they put in towards those spawns. If you're Dallas, though, contest as best you can, but you need to make sure you hold on to him now if you're going to give up this early time. That 20 point lead, now a 30 point lead. At risk of being closer to a minute if Subliners, or sorry, if Empire can't do anything to disrupt this hard point, but a good chance to really rally, rally behind a warehouse hold. Yeah, just like with giving these 20 seconds up, it just puts so much pressure on the next couple of holds for Dallas. And the 20 seconds are going to go the way of New York, so they're going to be up to about 220 points as we do rotate the warehouse. This has to be a flawless game from the side of Dallas. You look at the scoreboard, Shotzi, he's playing well, but doesn't have much help. On the other side, you already have two 30 bombs coming in, one from Zuma, one from Temp. Accuracy and attach, not far behind them, but here's the hold, and you see how far Hook's pushed out. Should be able to handle some of this pressure, at least finds one. I think you know that this has to be perfect. You need all of this time if you're Empire. You don't want it to be scrappy, and it might get scrappy now. Attach and Zuma, the duo, take down four, and there's the opening foothold into the hard point. Attach tries to go sliding in, but it's Shotzi that's able to cut him down. Shotzi and Illy hold for now. Unfortunately, a little bit of friendly fire on the Empire side, but when it settles with 25 seconds left, you still got accuracy in the back, and now the race is on for the other nine players on the map. Yeah, there's one player from Dallas inside. He's able to contest a bit. They're looking for him. Attach is able to find him. Nice shots. Now has to reload. It, it wasn't clean, though. Subliners did what they needed to do. It was yeah, not, not clean. clean at all. And what would you I, get? 10, 20 seconds? Like, not much from Empire at all. They are right in there. And again, it's just the slang from New York. That's when you looked at this matchup. You still have the individual talent on the New York side. Four players in the 30 kill range. Now just 14 seconds away. You can play so scrappy on this center platform. We'll see if New York could close out map number one. Look at what a balanced effort it is from Subliners. Up 40, eight points needed. Looking to shut it down. But Empire come through with a big wave of kills they need. But they need to get all this time, allow Subliners to get no time, yep. and flip Rotate, spawns. Yeah. And I, I know they've had a couple, well, they almost had a really good break last time through when Crim6 got the two piece and you got the early pressure. Who's that trying to get in yeah, behind one, enemy yeah, lines? Is that in. Crim6? All right, so Crim's already in behind but they still have to hold off these 20 seconds as well. So if you're playing in a 4v5 around the point. Yeah, New York can just get on it, right? And Happy knows that they're trying to flip. He's just trying to stay alive. Now they're just going to get on that scrap time. The Nays are here. Shotzi's able to find a double. Illy 
He's able to That's find two as That's well. But win. I mean, look at the other side of the map. Because of Happy's position, he just waited. This is it. Dallas has to go right now. They have to get in the hill. And I just don't know if they're going to be able to get across. Placer's the first man in. Him and Shotzi, they're going to slide on through. Slide, slide, slide. Waiting in the corner is accuracy. But it's Happy that was tucked away in depot, made sure they got the spawns. And it was so tough for Empire because you had to be perfect at both hard points. And you saw Crim6 with the early rotation, but as soon as his teammates died around the point, he had to wrap back. He had to try and fight it. So instead of maybe being able to hunt down Happy and take a one-on-one -on -one and get spawns for next, they still had to be worried because there was what, when he rotated about 20 seconds, I think, left in the hard point, and what, you only needed eight points for subliner, so you couldn't put all the focus in the next. You had to make sure you got there first. I mean, just look at the stats from New York. 38 from Attach, 35 from Accuracy, 35 from Temp, 36 from Zuma. All around the board, they step up. On the other side, it was Shotzi. Great to see, but the other players, they have to step up. Yeah, no, like nothing, nothing really to chat about much at all there on the other side for Empire, but I do want to now take a look at the scuff play of the game. It's going to be Attach locking it down. You know how good he was here at the first hard points when you start to get hyped about the talent on this team. It was just in the second hard point as he was making plays. But the snap was huge though, right? Because they get the 30 seconds off the middle hill and they immediately flip the spawn. This gave them a 60, 70 point lead, which we normally don't see on Gunrunner right away. Well, now let's take a look at the Astro Social soundboard. We're gonna take a look at some tweets coming in across the weekend as Mama attaches there and ready to go. Her son putting on on the main stage. Now let's see, what is our first tweet? Excited to sit back and watch some COD this weekend. Good luck, all eight teams that are in LA. That's coming from Scraps. Yeah, we yeah, know Scraps he loves to play, he loves to watch. That guy just lives and breathes and bleeds COD. Yeah, I mean, Scraps, uh, he was out here a, a little bit ago. He was just hanging out in LA, just on a bit of a vacation. Well, I do want to take a look at, uh, I believe, a video feature we have from Clay talking about his young teammates before we came into this weekend. Let's take a look. I honestly think what's going to be our star power, or our main kind of X factor, it is the, the new kids that we picked up uh, in Inder, or Illy and Shotzi. I really think those two players are kind of going to be our X factors just because they're fresh onto the scene, they haven't really played Call of Duty at a big tournament or land before. Um, they've, they've, you know, dabbled here and there, but nothing too crazy to the level of this, at least. Stats for Illy and Shotzi coming into this weekend. They are not good. Not great. Now, is the S&D KD okay for Ilya, which you expect him to be pretty strong in that mode as he's better got a lot that. of experience there. You still expect him to be better, better. than that. Like, these stats are horrible. <laughs> and now, do we think these two players are anywhere close to their peak? No. Do we think they're going to get better and better and better and better? Yes. But right now, that is not good enough to win a championship. Is it good enough to maybe get to a grand final? Sure, we saw them get there against Huntsman, but it wasn't a close series. So, I mean, yeah. I that's even hard to say, right? I mean, if you look at when they did get to a grand final in London, it, it was off the back of a reverse sweep against London. I don't know if you can rely on that. So you're definitely looking at these two to step up. Well, I think one thing that looked good for them early when we first commentated them was their search and destroy. Like, we expected it to be pretty strong. It looked great. But overall, they're at 4-4. Four and four, And a 50% win rate, can a 50% win rate in Search and Destroy? Can you win tournaments with that? Yes. Yeah. If your hard point, like your respawns, respawns are very dominant, good. Yeah. But that they aren't dominant in that mode yet. So I think the Search has got to get a lot better. Yeah, Search needs to get better. I believe we're going uh, to pick it, Piccadilly. I think Dallas is one and one here. So a solid map for them. Couple reps, couple reps. Yeah. For New York, I mean, it, it did Happy have a lackluster performance? Sure, but everybody else stepped it up. Everybody else dropped bombs. How will that transition to Search and Destroy? I'm curious what kind of role we have them in, because we've seen two snipe setups on this particular map. We've seen a lot of different, a lot of different looks. What are they going to have Happy do? And Happy, I, I think at times, right, he could pull out that sniper, but it's been a while. Be needed. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Is curious what they slot him into on Piccadilly as we get this lovely fly through of this beautiful map. And now we will get into it. Offense first for Empire. Let's see what Zuma on the subliner side can do as he has had a monster map one. 
know he loves to fly and search and destroy. There's the angle, there's the hit, and there's the snipe from Happy. I kind of like that too. I mean, that seems like an easy way to throw him in the mix, right? He's going to be sniping. That gets him comfortable. Just go to your spots, hit your shots. Go to your spots. That's poetic, Joe. Yeah. Go to your spots and hit your shots. Well, he did just that. Now three versus two. Advantage to subliners. Hook with the snipe. Happy with the snipe. Who's going to get to the spot and hit the shot? But it's Shotzi with Bomb. Trying to finesse his way towards that mid fountain. And in that top window is accuracy. Will he get the timing to check this bomb? Will he be able to get away with his life after the plant comes in? Because accuracy is going to peak this immediately. And there's a sniper looking over him. So that's making sure accuracy couldn't get the angle. Nice plant in from Empire. Look at a clutch at a two versus three. Yeah, who's just trying to find a fit? Force a two on two. Two players, though, pushing him wide. To be attached and happy, and they're going to catch him. So now it's all down to Shotzi, only with the MP5. And now they know his position. Here they come, and they're able to retake it. With the man advantage, nobody goes down a clean round out of New York sub. Yep, nice, subliners. nice patient retake. Attach. Fantastic round. Him and accuracy combined for four. Yes, you give up the plant, but you handle business in the retake. Pick it up right where they left off in the hard point. Good first round. Happy, still going to have the sniper in hand. Wants to hit the sniper on the cross. He's got a chance and I think just misses by a hair. But the opportunity was there. Yeah, we've seen uh, Wuskin on this map. How many hit markers does he have in uh, that position? Yeah, in the triple digits, I think, at this point. But a couple of nade trades go back and forth and attach with a pick. Who tries to get a guess? It's aggressive, but who uh, attaches? Oh, He's going, oh, but who oh. hits it? That is a snap. It's Hook with the flick. Barry's attach. Three versus three. Bomb still in Kemp's hands. You can see how forward accuracy is. Just so scared of this sniper from Hook. And there's another one. Accuracy meets his maker. Yeah, you thought he would be scared. He just stood up straight. You know. Gave him a shot. And Hook continues to. Do they know that he's sniping? Because it feels like they're just giving him angles down to hit shots. Let's peek him again. I thought he saw the right happy. Never mind. You can hit the snipes too. Now happy. The newcomer. In a 1v2. 15 seconds to go. Can't get it done. Empire tied up at 1 1. Yeah, he got a little scary there when Attach was getting aggressive. I mean, if he finds Hook, if Hook doesn't hit that shot, it's a four on two. The round I mean, is probably both, over. Both of Hook's hits were nasty, by the way. Both of those snipes. Not the easiest of hits. I mean, maybe accuracies, but I think he even got a wall bang on that. A car bang. A sniping montage early. Happy with some shots. Hook hitting them. Trying to hold the angle, but they pre it, and Shotzi's going to connect. First blood for Shotzi, man advantage to the Empire. Sniper cleared off the map for subliners. Now, what can Zuma do from this strong position in the steps? As all of Empire starting to work their way towards that B site, really outside of, I can't even read that number. Is that eight? Six? I have, <laughs> who's at the bottom side of the screen? It's Clay. You have Attach in that sneaky position towards the B side. Are they going to check it? Attach is out. Well, he's going to pop on up. They don't check it. They don't check it. Can he find the second kill? Krim, though, able to peek the pillar and finds the second kill for Dallas to give them a four on three. But now it is Temp with the response. 3v3. 30 seconds to go. I believe Bomb all the way in that B side corner. Good thing for them is all of Subliners kind of stack mid-map. They have an easy rotation each time. It's Clay working the flank. Is Clay going to find an opening? 
Quickly does, but right as Illy drops as well, 2v2, 15 seconds to go. They've got to get this bomb planted. Hook's going to be able to pick it up, but Zuma's now got the angle. It's all on Clay, 1v2. Eight seconds to go. He knows the bomb position. He knows where the kill got picked up, and Zuma, I'm out of there. He's just going to go play hide and seek down the subway. Not going to find him. Round time out. Subliners. Round win. That's a heads up play there from Zuma. He goes right to the subway, right? The subliners in the subway. Yeah, that, that is their home, yeah, Joe. That's their home. That's their home. Yeah, yeah they, figured, they figured it out. <laughs> Dude, exactly where he wanted to go. Now, nah, he knew where Bomb was down. He got the big kill to put it down again. And then just make sure Clay has no chance to get any kind of clutch. What a shock this would be if subliners go up to, oh, uh, he almost again happy giving haircuts for free. Well, it's been all defense so far in New York. They're trying to switch it up. Temp was trying to get aggressive middle with Zuma, but Zuma, he gets through. They thought the nade was, was the player who was trying to get through. Now just trying to stay alive. Has that silence popped and somehow is in this position, but Shotzi. He's ready for him. He was a little weak, but back to up. I'm surprised he wasn't more gun up there. I mean, the call out's got to be coming in. There's a player in there. His teammates are tagging him up. I mean, maybe he has tried to get a nice timing on the push. I just think he's weak, right? He's just, just kind of panicking. Yeah, yeah, panic mode. Is I was just, I was, I was waiting. I, I kept thinking the whole time, like, gun up, gun up. Get ready. There's somebody here. Bomb will be planted, though. Three versus four. Still very doable for New York. And I mean, Dallas, they have to go. They're going to have to start pushing here soon. Shots there from Illy. That's a clean one to take out the final subliners player. Clay on the defuse. Empire will tie it up, but that was a very, very clean retake. Yeah, it got me a little nervous, right? I mean, they waited about like 10, 12 seconds before they started moving, but they were just trying to find position. They knew it, man, man advantage. Maybe someone on New York was going to try to make the play. Still all defense. No real standout stats so far. Pretty balanced. I mean, you got a slow start for Temp, kind of one on four, but everybody kind of in the mix right now. Not like our earlier series, the quadruple positive Priesta. No one, no one asserting that level of dominance on the game. Pushing up the A side will be Clay. Happy gets the first one. Tim comes flying out. Clay, you got to finish this kill. Clay, you got to finish this kill. I thought for a second the drop shot was going to take him down. But the patience and the shots pay off as Clay it, it, this wins This is it. a big position, though, when bombs going down, right? Like, a lot of the retake situations start from that top shop window. And now with Clay here, they know where they're going to funnel New York, but Happy is able to catch Shotzi. It's like playing whack-a-mole there with a sniper rifle. Like, Shotzi just kept peeking. Happy puts him down. Only attach in Zuma. Left on the subliner side of things. Attach. Oh, he runs out of ammo. I have no idea how Attach gets the one kill. One he on actually one. changed together a second. One on one with 20 seconds to go. Clay's going to peek it. There's a snap, but not quite there as Clay from Top Shot. Top Shot wins the round, but the read was in for Attach. The shot just not good enough. It, and I think Clay in that position, not a lot of players go for the fight, right? Like they're just sort of peeking it and then they're going to back down when they get weak. He just goes for the kill, able to finish it. I, I don't know how Tatch survives leaping off a top scaffolding and then not only getting one kill, but getting two kills. So yeah. he catches one mid reload, but then snaps onto another. But there's the first offensive win. That's two rounds in a row. Now for Dallas. It's like, come into my web. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to greet you. That's where he's been making plays, just trying to find. Zuma's just going to shoulder him. Peek me. Spots him for a second. Peek but me. Doesn't want to get too aggressive. I want to put you down. Can't hit the shot, but they're still here. He knows he's going to have another opportunity. They peek wide at the truck, just looking for any kind of angle. It's his teammate, Krim. He's able to get the first and get Trophy out. Happy trying to counter snipe on the other end of it. Puts one through a chest as Tim finds the kill. Three in a row there for subliners, which puts it down to just Clay and Illy to try and clutch. Illy stays alive, though. Illy's able to stay alive and forces the two on two. Bomb being planted. 
accuracy and temp versus Clay and Illy. Subliners. And, and I mean, with accuracy's positioning, you have a lot of the map to use. He's going to pop on up, but now they know position. One on one. Still Miss, a lot of time to work with. Mr. Ice in his veins. Up against the youngster in Illy, and Illy smokes him for the third round in a row. Accuracy known for his S and D clutches over the past couple of years, but Illy just put him in the dirt there with the crisp and four I, I shots. I mean, he just positioned himself kind of awkwardly. As soon as he pops up and you know puts some shots in the clay, Illy knows his position. He knows where the advantage is and goes behind the police car. Accuracy at that point is just stuck. He has to take the gun. So, so you think the post plant, post plant position need to be better from subliners? It, it's just one of those things where if you're going to play that position, I feel like you cannot pop up until you're ki killing someone defusing the bomb, right? Like Got that it. whole thing is just trying to be sneaky. 4-2 now for Empire. Back to offense they go. Trying to chain together four rounds in a row. Everything on the map exploding. There's Happy with the first blood, a big one. His subliners desperately need to get around on the board. Attach joins in on the fun as well. Crimsix looking desperately for the trade. Just waiting for Attach maybe to peek again. Shotzi and Crimsix will be the only two left. Zuma with a nice little Simtex blows Crimsix off the map. And there's the answer you need if you're subliners. You only lose one player. You pick Dallas apart over 30 seconds. You get a convincing round when you get right back into this map, too. Yeah, the tough part for New York, though, has just been finding an answer on offense. They haven't been able to do so. Dallas has just been so strong. Anything that you've seen they need to do different on offense that could help them? Not really? Okay. Well, let's keep an eye on it here and see if there's anything you're seeing about the Dallas defense that's been so strong or anything about New York's offense that has them on the zero round when call him in that regard. They're going back to that aggressive mid push. This time, though, nobody gets picked off by a nade. So it's going to be Temp and Zuma, and they're going to go. But there's Hook with an eight shots. He's able to stay alive with some nice movement, and then they get picked apart. The whole bus push is just to catch them by surprise. As soon as you are seen in that position, they all are going to flood on out and take you down, and that's what happens. Anything off timing-wise? Just not winning gunfights I mean, once they got there. Just They're getting naded like you. You have to have man advantage. You have to catch them by surprise. If you don't kill them right away, that's what happens. Happy last man up, and he will drop Empire. Another strong defense. Subliners just can't push through that defensive wall by the Empire. They're going to have to do it now if they're going to get a game two victory. Came out so strong in the hard point. Empire's looking a little too good in the search. Can Empire bury it here? Happy, another first blood. I believe that's his third of this map, too, with the snipe. He's only at six and six, but he's had some big opening picks. Now, can they turn this into a round win? Nice trade from accuracy. From this position, too, accuracy knows where, where it's kind of safe to peek. He's not going to peek out wide right. He's just going to check the bomb, watch middle buses. His teammates will watch the cross. That's exactly what's happening. Happy not able to connect, but accuracy maybe with a nade able to take down Krim. It's on Shotzi and Hook to try and close this out. Accuracy still in that strong position, forces Shotzi to try and move across. Now, Hook just trapped between three players. Damage from everywhere coming in, and Hook falls. Subliners stay alive to see another round. Accuracy with a big round from this position. He was able to find three kills, one middle buses, another grenade, and then that last player there on the bomb. So a big round for him, but again, it's been about New York's offense. Haven't been able to find a round. We'll see if they can force a round 11. If there was ever a time to win an offense, it's now. 
Do they stick with the aggressive mindset? Yes, they do. Right back at it. I love it. Right back at the mid. Zuma out and soaring. Can he finish the kill? He's able to just get across. But but again, as soon as he gets pushed up, his teammate behind him, Temp, gets taken down. And then, the, you know, they just re-rotate. They find his positioning. Zuma gets taken down. Just never able to find that opening mid -buses. I think the three times they did that, three players got naded. Is that just preparation from the Empire side, being prepared for the offensive looks you're going to see from subliners? That's just hanging on to your nades, right? Knowing when to use them, coordinating them. Not over yet, though. But happy and attach up to clutch up in a 2v4. Attach just obliterated Hoop. I, I don't know how he won that fight. The movement was on point, but I thought he was dead to rights. The peek in, attach. He's getting it done. Now unhappy. The fill-in for zero, 1v2, 25 seconds to go. Can he get him to around 11? Unfortunately for him, his dead silence all gonna be used now to get this plant down. There comes in the nade check, and oh, that'll do it. Clay with the nade and Hapathy, or Happy, Hapathy, 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 Hapathy blown to pieces. By the nade. Thank you, J Cap. I appreciate that. I don't know what half of the is, Cap. I have no idea where that came from. But a lovely nade in from Clay. And well, that kind of highlights what they did positively throughout that map. They had some incredible nade usage to slow down the offensive push from subliners. Hey, Pac-Man's here too. What's up, man? Number number one coach in the league. <laughs> he just laughed. <laughs> oh. Happy stats. He goes six and seven. He has three first bloods. Uh, he's probably a little frustrated now because he had a chance to kind of clutch that game at the end, not able to do it, but. Yeah, I mean, here's the stats though. Attach having a, another big game, 12 and seven on the other side. It was Placer who's dropping double digits. But I, I think really the, the big story was just the offensive defensive rounds. And for Dallas, they're able to steal one towards that A site. That's a difference maker. Well, right now you are watching Empire and just around the corner is Dallas Empire's first event. The Dallas Empire hosting an epic home series March 28th and 29th. They've got special VIP tickets with access to an after party, exclusive merchandise. Don't miss your chance to see Crim6 Placer and the rest of the team up close and in person. It should be one of the more hype events of the year, and that is right around the corner. That's actually the stretch of, wait, the start of our crazy stretch, right? Like, it's like four, four, weeks, in four weeks in a row. Yeah. We're, all, we're going everywhere, but... That is going to do it for the map, too. Series tied up 1-1. Dallas impeccable on the defensive side of things. We'll see how they can do in the Dom. We'll be right back after this quick break.
Call of Duty League is brought to you by Metro by T-Mobile. Rule your day with the number one brand in prepaid. Let's take a look at the U.S. Army tactical play. It's Clayster and Illy making the plays as Empire looks dominant in search and destroy. Yeah, I mean, they're just able to stay alive. Right, in a very tough situation. Is this a 2v4 to start, yeah, right? 2v4. This was just after they won that offensive round, which was so important. They play their life. Illy, he's going to use that dead silence. Bomb goes down. And this is what I was talking about, right? You, you have temp and accuracy is so close. As soon as accuracy pops up, he has to stay in this position. And that's where Illy is able to, to pounce, win the one-on-one, -on -one, secure three rounds in a row for Dallas Empire. Dallas Empire tied up on one. That's a big win because they, they're down what? They're down 0-1, not in a situation they expected to be likely in this matchup. They're able to clutch up, though. And I think what, what stands out about this team, what should stand out, they should be a squad that's pretty good in all modes, right? Like, you expect them to be solid and hard point and dom once they get things rolling. It, it's a strong search and destroy car, uh, core, you would think, with the young players. That's why I think they're going to be a team that's hard to bury, like hard to put away. Even if you go up early, they're a team that should be able to fight back, and they do it there in the search. I don't know if they're at that point yet, but I think they're going to get there. I, they should, they should be well-rounded. They should yeah. be. I think they are well-rounded, but I think on the other side of the stage as well is another well-rounded team, at least what we uh, expected would be with the amount of pure talent. Yeah, right now they're just they well-rounded at being not good. Right. So far. I mean, they, they should be, but yeah, they just haven't. They We've haven't seen really glimpses yet. of it, yeah, right? They, like, yeah, that's true. They have that great map one. Like They beat FaZe in a domination. On there's this a, map. Yeah, that's true. So you think if you can beat FaZe here in Dom, that You'd be able to battle just about anybody. We've seen everything from Empire here. I mean, the first time they played Huntsman here, they get absolutely smoked. smoked. Yeah. They, they play a lot stronger the second time we see it. So uh, they've been a little little up and down. Obviously, the, the cap rules have changed. Like, there's been a lot that's gone down with domination. But curious to see now how Empire look as we start off with the glorious Crimson's. To see what Dallas wants to do right away. They want that A flag as quickly as possible. They send four on the flank. That's going to be four dead. Zuma's the last one up, and I think they actually, they did it. They flipped those spawns. So that was just magnificent from the Dallas Empire side. Plus, you have a player towards the B flag. That can't happen. That, that cannot happen from New York. And I, I think what, what you saw from New York is typically you have a, a player like, you know, top right of the minimap. You didn't have anyone back there or, or the top eight building. They were trying to lock it down from the middle of the map. And what Dallas did so well is they just smoked it out. They smoked out the cross and pushed them out. I mean, that was a flip in the opening 30 seconds. That's just insane. So what would have favored maybe subliners in the opening five minutes of this half? Now looks very good for Empire. No one really able to get any semblance of control over towards B, but they're buying in for pressure now. On the point will be attached. Krim6 trying to shut it down. Some lovely shots from him at a position going up against the submachine gun. Uh, he's able to take that with the M4. Shotzi comes soaring in for the trade. One more, though, up top in the form of Temp, who's able to regain control of that B site, but still just very little objective presence. As now they look to hop in. And New York, they're, they're going to secure B. But Illy, the pressure here right away. It's just so tough to defend B from the C side. You really only have what top L is that in the best position for you. And they're just not able to, to find anything. They, one set of kills goes yeah. the way of Dallas, and that's it. They have it for a, an instant, yeah. it feels like. Now, subliners, what do you do from here? Well, they get a lot of kills. That's three kills and surging up mid-map. Go Happy and Zuma as they try to fly on through. Two players will push towards B as well to put the low man there and Crim6 in a tough position. They're not able to get to A. Prim6 wins his one-on-one -on -one over at B. So what I thought looked so good, they got three or four kills off the of spawn, but they split, right? Two go A, two go B, and now they look to be in trouble. I, I don't know what just happened, but a player from Dallas just spawned middle of dumpster, so they're just cutting off the spawns right away. 
Well, our uh, screen has gone out, so here we go. Let's go to our Telestrator screen, Joe. <laughs> we, oh, never mind. We're back. We're back. Okay. So we get right back into it. I saw your face. Right, well, right as you made that face, our, our TV went out. That's why I was like, what are you looking at? I didn't notice the spot. <laughs> Dallas now with four dead, make it all five, and they continue to hold this setup. The good thing for New York, I guess, is you haven't really had a three cap opportunity yet from, from Dallas. They haven't been able to neutral flag. They haven't been able to get out of it. And remember, for New York, you started on that stronger side. Now I'm just trying to get any presence towards that B flag. Looks like they might be able to do so right now, but Illy and Shotzi, those nades come in, right? With that giant window hovering over the B-fly, you just spawn up, you get a nade in, and that'll help your teammates. That's gonna be four dead for New York. The lead you'd expect them to have after the early break towards the A side. They've had subliners scrambling for the last two minutes to find any mid-map control. Zuma wins a big fight top L, but can they actually get into B? There's still two players there. By the time they get in, the last member will be spawned up for Empire and rallying across mid-map. You've just been split more often than not if you're subliners. It's been tough to effectively find a squad push onto B or A. Due to the fact they're spawning kind of back office, they're just going to elect to push right on through. I think it's going to be Clayster that's going to hop onto C. One pushes through and attack from subliners to the other side. He wins his one-on-one, -on -one, but there's only 40 seconds remaining. Yeah, and with 40 seconds left, right, Dallas is just going to take take the BC setup. Right? They'll, they'll take as many points. It doesn't points matter now. Yeah, yeah. It, it doesn't matter. So, yes, New York flipped to A, but just not enough time really to do anything with. So this actually works out for Dallas. Their lead will continue to grow. We take a look at the stats on the Dallas side. Everybody having a solid game. You have Illy at 13 and 6. On the other side, it's happy. 5 and 13. Not the best half of domination, but still one half to go that could turn things around. Yeah, I mean, he, he didn't put up the biggest stats in map one, though, and they were still able to win that hard point. So they can do it without him dropping bombs. The difference, though, they got a really good well rounded effort out of the other four guys who all dropped a 35 plus in that map one. But what a half it is for Empire. Almost 100 points on the board in those five minutes. And now the, 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 the terrifying aspect is that your Empire, you spawn on A side. Yeah. And I just don't think subliners are going to get a 30 second flip like we saw Empire do. I know it took about a minute to get that two cap control after that, but still, like the damage is done in the opening 30 seconds. And I think you highlighted it properly, like at B, how hard it is to control from the C side. The fact that you can't get those nades in through the window, like well, it, you really we saw can, how difficult it if is. If we can jump to, to Krim's point of view, this is typically where you see a player defend, but as he gets taken out from, <laughs> from a ridiculous angle, it, it's usually so hard to push that top side of the mini-map because you have a player in that window with an assault rifle. He's going to find a kill or two. Yeah, but even with that first blood from Happy, you still have A, B control. Everything's going well for Dallas. You could not have called him out getting smoked better than that. Good stuff, Joe. We haven't seen that. Yeah. That was cool. <laughs> he just got ripped. It was great stuff from Happy, but it didn't matter. It did not matter. <laughs> Now, Krim, sorry, Clay is going to rally back towards B. You've got all five people here from Subliners. You would think this might be a switchover in B control as Temp watches the top window, takes down Clay as well. Accuracy looking over from the front door with the M4. And now that'll get neutral, but just because of how quick you can get in from that A side, whether it's nades, whether it's your sub players just soaring on through. Dude, we looked at the map, there were literally five Subliners players there, one guy from Empire. It looks like, yes, you're absolutely getting the point. They barely got to the neutral. I don't even know if the neutral finished. And you're right back in if you're Empire. And they were, we're talking about like a four down scenario there. Temp though, he might have made the play. He's able to sneak on through, through B towards the A flag. An opportunity here for New York. Yeah, look where Zero spawns. Hook, Hook spawns towards back green. That's where you want to get him. This yeah. is a really good chance for subliners now to chip away at this lead. The problem, the lead is 15. You've got three and a half minutes to go. And they have, they have to defend this flag. They have to defend it. Attach, he's going to run out of ammo. Illy, he's got the pistol. The pistol comes out. He's going to get the kill. And now Illy has some help. So just when we thought it was going to go great for New York, Dallas, they respond. They capture B. They capture A. New York right back in the same spot they were just in. I think that was the moment the subliners had to win. They had to win a clean. That, that might have kind of finished the game right there, considering the time left and the, the lead you have for Empire. But really, as stupid as this sounds, 
Where the game was decided was in the first 30 seconds of side one. Yeah. When Empire got that break. We talk about that a ton on Hardpoint, but the same is true really here. I mean, yes, it's it's different in the sense of one, you're talking about the second Hardpoint entire shop, not wanting to get broken for that. But here, just with A being the preferred side, that just cannot happen. You cannot be a professional team in this league and get busted in the first 30 seconds. That's basically the first push. If that happens, this is what the score line's gonna look like. So, well, maybe one last chance for New York. Are you able to get A and B? Got two and a half minutes. We've seen some pretty nasty three caps, but they haven't even gotten B yet. That's a neutral, and that's a thing now. When you have this lead, if you're Dallas, you can just sort of pester around the map, right? Just go for neutrals. Hold C, just make sure they can't get a three cap in. Because at this point, that's exactly what you need if you're New York. Yeah, I mean, if there were two more minutes on the clock and you look at the mini-map right now, I'd say, all right, subliners have a chance, but it's just such a demand with this little time remaining. They're pushing now for the three cap. I was gonna say that's gonna leave it for attached to make the play around B, but as he drops, you don't even win it for the three cap. Krim6 able to rally well, back. One at B, you have one at A. Happy will drop. Who really went off for Empire? Anyone that stands out big time? Not really, I mean, Shotzi's Shots, had two good respawns, though, I'll tell you that. Yeah, and Ill this, Illy this, had a good first half. This is the map where what Shotzi had that what six and thirty type game, his first series on the main stage. Looking a little bit better here at 21 and 16. Yeah, Illy had a really good first half, but I think as their sort of hold slowed down, New York got a little bit more aggressive, he slowed down, but just a balanced effort from everybody on the side of Dallas. A lot of kills through for subliners, but not going to matter. Where are we heading for map four? Uh, you got time to look. Yeah, that's what we're gonna do. I forget which one it was. Uh, it was Hackney. I think we only started Hackney, Hackney, and then Ramaza map five. So, wh why did you like the Ramaza if we could get there? Well, we I get mean, to play the yeah, Empire, yeah, right? Yeah, Alice hasn't played it at all. Okay. Right? They're zero and zero. Haven't played in a, an official match. Obviously, they could have been practicing. It could be a very strong map for them. But that conversation about the opening spawns for this map, well, it's gonna stick right into our map four. We'll have the same exact conversation when we get into that one. But subliners, unfortunately, no amount of killing sprees for Zuma is gonna be the difference. Now just trying to pad your stats, I guess, as best you can if you're subliners, as you've been out of this for quite some time. We need a mercy rule. Yeah, we need like a surrender. Yeah, yeah, like, well, like StarCraft or something? Just like a GG surrender. Yeah, see ya, <laughs> I'm out. That'll do it, the final seconds tick. Empire win back-to-back -back maps. They go up 2-1. And if you're subliners, you won the first hard point. You're going to have to take a second, but the scary part, you're staying on the same map. You're staying on Hackney. You showed some vulnerabilities there with regards to spawn manipulation. You're going to have to be better. Going to have to be better. But before we get to that, let's go ahead and uh, take a look at our map stats. Is, yeah, I mean... Again, we sort of touched on it towards the end. Very balanced from the Dallas side. On the New York side, Happy had a, a rough game throughout the entire time. But remember, as we just saw, right, towards the end of the game, some of those players padding those stats a little bit. We touched on the fact that Illy and Shotzi are the ones that we think really need to improve if Empire are going to be an elite team. This is their stats coming in, which we showed you a little bit early. Very pedestrian. Not great stats have got to be better. So I'm curious now, three maps in, where do we stand? How are they looking? How are we looking now? I think uh, Illy put up, I believe, what, 22 and 17 in that last map. Illy put up a nice performance. I think the question's gonna be, <laughs> I love Illy, man. Guy is nasty. It's just, when is it all gonna click in the variants and all the respawn modes? When is it gonna click for him? And Shotzi, he's put together two great respawns. Yeah. Yeah, 24 and 20 there. He had a monster map one as well. Yeah, he was the only one who re was really productive in, in game one. And it's good to see him do well in that map, just considering that's where all the memes started off for him, was getting smoked on that particular domination, but stepping it up there, they get a map win. Now looking to close out the series as we'll stay on Hackney. But there's so much, I think, pressure here. I mean, the pressure differs on each team because of how many tournaments you've played, where you're at in the standing, but when you see the 12th or 8th spot and 10 points separating them, 
this is uh, the most important weekend so far, and I think that's going to be what we say every single week as we go, because it's yeah, just going to yeah. get more and more pressure, but it's uh, it's un unbelievable. Well, it's the it's CDL points like presented by Game Fuel. One of those things, too, right, where it, if you don't find, you know, points to put you in a, a solid position towards the end of the year, you're asking one of those bottom 9 through 12 teams to win an event, right? Like, you're putting pressure on them to say, hey, you know what, you had to get top four or get top two. Well, and yeah, I just don't true. know if they could do that. Because, you know, we're saying that, oh, it's only 10 points to separate these teams. But that's probably what it's going to be between like, yeah. the 8th and ninth team. Because, yeah, I think you nailed it. Like, you might have four events left. But if you're a bottom tier team, you might be hoping you get 10 points a weekend. Like, 20 yeah. would be cool for great. some of these squads. So, 10 points of separation is, is a lot more than it looks when you just break it down a simple graphic like that. You got to get points, you got to get them consistently, and you got to get them now, especially if you're at the bottom looking up. To Hackney we go, and now the question, who's going to get that right side spawn? Who's going to spawn Coalition, tire shop side? Usually you're able to push out to a big lead, unless you... Well, it should, it should be New York, right, up. just based off of what we had in map one, where they were able to flip, so... I think Dallas had the strong side in map one, so it should be New York here. Well, you just got broken yep. in this same position. So you just had a map where you just got broken with this setup. It cannot happen again. It, it, we've had teams sort of switch it up, right? Like they'll just fight for that, that first hill, try to get as much time as possible. Instead of hitting through the top side, they try to fight through the hill, send four or five through. As two quick kills will go the way of Dallas Empire. Krim now working middle of the map with this M4. You see what he's trying to do. He's trying to find an opening. I think that player hurt him though. Big gunfight goes down. Temp able to win it. I mean, if he gets that kill, who knows? Yeah, who probably knows? done. Yeah, I mean, they're they're probably flipped because they were all pretty pushed out outside of Temp, so it might have gotten interesting. So, big win there from Temp. But it's Dallas that are looking to close out the series here on the hard point. Let's go to an Astro Gaming listen in with the Dallas Empire. Nice. I'm on watch on the car. Push through. Push through. All to top. All top. Go. Go. Oh, yeah, top, 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 dead. 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 Top AC Dan, one more there door. One, one more there door. One, one shot their door. One shot their door. One shot their door. One shot their door. Zuma. Oh, you ran out. Nice. Got one. We're still, this is good. Donnie's green. Donnie's green. Okay, okay. One is that. I have that. Half half full. They double native me. Native port. Our native milk. Donnie's top green. Donnie's top green. I hear. I hear. 100%. I'm sun. I'm sun. Someone, one shot. Under scap. Under scap. Yo, one's cop car. You guys, I'm just so milking. Cop car dead. Cop car dead. Cop car dead. Let's go. Four clips. Four clips. Four clips. Four clips. Go, go, go. And go. And go. Back right, for go left attached. Back right, back right. Right. Top green. I'm looking at one top back right. top left. Watch, I got him. Lot, 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 I'm trying to but our door, our door. Top AC, top AC, yo. Top AC, got me. Yo, 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 I'm back apartment right now. I'm in scrap. I'm in scrap. I'm in scrap. I'm in scrap. Go for it. Watch out, nail porter. Watch out, happy. There's two, there's two, there's two. Right back into the action. Empire. Looking good, but with these final 15 seconds from subliners, they'll be right back into the game. Looking at a roughly tied position as we'll head over to Smokestack. Any big takeaways thus far? I, I mean, there was an opportunity for the Dallas Empire to, to blow away this game wide open, but it was attached inside the hill. Who was able to find two kills in play with an AK. We haven't we haven't seen this. Switching it up has the AK out, so maybe he knows something we don't. No, dude, shout out, shout out to Hitch. I think it was Hitch the tweet the other day. He's like, I want to see assassination. I want to see an AK come yeah. out. I want to see an Uzi come out. He wants to see some of the different guns yeah, coming to the rotation. He wants that to, like, showboat, not to use it in the middle it's of a clay. very clay. It's Clay. If anyone's going to do it, it's Clay. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm just saying, I want to get right back on board with him. Smoke him! See, see what this thing does. <laughs> oh, well, there he is. Okay, well, it didn't go well there. Yeah, what? Well, one death he's gotten stuck, and that one he just got caught. So, yeah, 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 yeah. a little tough little stretch. Just kept it out, though. Curious to see if he still has it in his hands. Can we go back up to play. Still got it out? Yeah. Sure does. All right. Let's just. Yeah, maybe it's just not the, not going well. <laughs> but, just but, that's an unlucky little stretch, Joe. That's all it is. Stretch, yeah, it's yeah. not the AK. Uh, we're just calling for it. That's what happened. <laughs> we'll just stand more with Illy. I mean, uh, he he switched, so we lost it. All right. Okay. Well, really good try, Clay. Yep. Really good. <laughs> really good. 
would go and for a little treachery salt. And it was nothing to do with the god. He was just like unlucky timing, yeah. stuck. Like <laughs> Empire still find themselves up 20. Prem 6 into the hard point. The swarm comes forward. It's accuracy with three inside. The point gets him out to 10 and 11. It's a nice multi kill from accuracy. We'll see if he can keep the streak alive. His office gets ready to wrap up. You see all those white arrows top left of the map. They're set up for Doc's building. Accuracy, the streak does continue. Now four in a row. As everybody stacked around this green office building. Accuracy might get fed another one. He does. He's hungry. He's eaten. And Subliners taking over control of this game. Yeah, nice hold there at office for New York. But now here's the tough part. And they break through towards this Doc building. It's so tough. It's similar to that tire shop, that second hill. In Dallas, we saw in the first map, when they were able to get set up, when they're able to just sort of take the pressure off, they were holding so much time. But Zuma, he's able to get his way in, at least disrupt this setup, and that might allow his teammates to get in a, a nice position to actually break those low spawns. And with that Zuma play, at least the last one left. I thought there'd be parallel spawns top, but I think whoever was top smokestack ends up spawning Empire all the way out across the map towards back office. So that gets a man, it gets him a couple yeah, of Ilian, seconds, Ilian, but not Ilian a lot Huko. of time. Yeah, Illy and Huko, huge though. I mean, they found four kills. It was basically a two on four, and they won that. Well, that'll look to wrap up our first set of rotations. Set up a warehouse, you see subliners. Warehouse will pop, subliners are in. Is Hoop looking for some kind of opening? One top L, one goes bottom L. Clay continuing to try and secure this side and with the M4 in hand, he's able to do so. The AK put to bed for now and now Clay hitting his shots. And, and even though Here comes the swarm though. Oh, oh, oh God, they all just spawn on him. They all spawn up the, the same side of the map. Both teams, both teams spawn fire shot side. Just parallel and well, New York, they're, they're gonna get those four kills. Okay. I would have understood that if Clay had just died, but I think he was still alive when all three of them popped on his on, on their teammate there on subliners, so they all pop. That'll set subliners up nice for next. What, what I was gonna say is at least with his position, if he doesn't flip, they at least get a lot of time, which they have gotten time, but I think when he got those kills, Dallas tried to push through, and then with that, New York, they get a, a, the final 10 seconds. Now it's just a 13-point lead in which higher shop. You have the, the position you want if you're in New York. Okay, this lead's about to evaporate. It's a big push now from Empire. You've got everybody deep from Subliners. Kind of going one by one right now if you're Empire, not finding any kind of opening top or bottom, maybe an opening right up mid. It's going to be happy. It's going to need to hit some shots. And he's able to do just that. Can't take more with him. That's an opening for Shotzi now to get the tire shot. Still spawning close as subliners, Another 30 chance. seconds remaining, but yeah, you've got a chance to break through here. The pressure falls to attach. He's gonna end up dropping. It's Hook that makes the play. Him and Illy, once again, they go massive. There's the break, and that's gonna get him, what, about 20 seconds, so. It's a 40 it, second 40 swing. second swing, yeah, that's the big part of it. In Dallas, they almost did that on that first rotation inside tire shop, but it was attached who went big, found, found those final two kills. Well, it looks like Alien Hook have been good on the breaks, good on the holds. Yep. Like, the firepower between those two players has been nasty. Now Smokestack pops. Only six points separating these two squads. Clayster sitting top L, looking for the angle. Temp, though, has his number. I think put some damage. It's actually Zuma that finishes the kill. Dallas with a solid hold here. That's most stacks so far. The nades finally come in. That's gonna be four down. You still have one player all the way back docks. It's probably accuracy with the M4. You can see in New York, they're just trying to hold this position right now for that final docks hill when we get here. But accuracy will get taken down. Illy was trying to push under him, but Attach was able to pick it up. In New York, this is where they were so good on the first hill. Our first rotation was it, inside this office hill. For accuracy, what had the five in a row, and they they just grouped up and dominated this particular point. Maybe it's Ilian Hoop. They have to be the playmakers yet again. 
Happy. Trying so desperately to get to the point now. Smoke out. Bullets everywhere. It's chaos in the point. Can't quite connect on his shots. Door closed. Door open. Accuracy dead. Five in a row there for Empire to shut it down. Now Empire look to close out the series. 35 more points needed. Almost exactly that on the clock. So Subliners, they need to hold that top left Dockside spawn, but they also have got to contest. They've got to battle in. And well, they're able to get inside. You do have one player who's pushing towards the top side from Dallas, and they spawn inside Warehouse, and they're just trying to go. They're trying to go. And attack, she's trying to stay alive. So the spawns are going to flip. I think that was Krim that pushed through. Yeah, Krim. He's able to stay alive now, and this is exactly what they want. They have the setup. It's about to be a tight game as the scrap time goes the way in New York. Illy and Hook, we talked about them with their great plays on the hold. And that continues now, just 25 more seconds to close this series out. It was a tie game, but it's Empire now a position in what should be our final hard point. Can New York get in? That number five in Zuna spawning, spawning out so far across the map, but he's got to get there. 10 points now away our Empire from closing out this series. They're just funneling into the wall, but it's Empire. Crim6 with a lovely double. Not enough time, not enough space. Subliners can't get in, and Empire close out the hard point and close out the series. Yeah, 3-1 fashion. I, I mean, some very close maps, though. Uh, obviously, domination, they they dominated. But, but the outside hard, of that, the other yeah, three, yeah. The, the hard points were close. And it, it's, it's better than what I thought from New, from New York. So definitely uh, still a lot, a lot to go for them. It's interesting, though, because I mean, I, I think Happy was pretty solid in the search, but not, not great in the yeah. response, at least statistically. I, I just don't think he needs to be. With that much talent around yeah, him? Yeah, Is yeah. it sort of like a cap type thing? Like, you don't need bombs out of cap yeah, on this exactly. optic lineup, yeah. you would think. As long as the other four step it up, they'll be all right. Someone can do the dirty work, but. Yeah, super competitive series from Subliners. A series in which I think they they could have won. I think they know they could have won if it probably wasn't for a couple of mistakes here and there throughout the respawns, but impressed. Yeah, you see there Illy and Krim both with those double 30 bombs leading the way, but it was some some big holds, I think, from the Illy Hoop duo. They were able to break inside that Big holds, shot. big breaks, big everything, yeah. Yeah, some huge plays from them, and that's a 28 set. We said about that 20, that 20 second swing. I mean, look, it's a 28 point difference. Like, that could have been it. What's the ceiling for Empire for you this weekend? How far can they take it? Ah, I think the grand final. I think it has to be the grand final for Empire. Whether they could be beat FaZe, I, I think I still have to see more from them. Yeah, I saw, uh, I, I said that they were like the third best team in the game right now, and someone someone tweeted me a picture of the standings with them in seventh, and yeah. said I'm an idiot. That is one of the dumbest tweets that I've ever seen. There's not a lot, too many like, you know, I, intelligent people, but it is what it is. Yeah, because <laughs> I've played as many tournaments, but yeah. Rambo Ray, the new general manager and coach of this roster, I believe we've actually got him on stage with Rich. We do indeed. We're going to jump in right now with the PlayStation Instant Reaction. And I know that you just kind of got to start working with the team a little bit. What's your main focus right now? What is the goal? What are you going to be doing with this squad? Uh, obviously, I haven't worked much with the guys yet, but we're trying to set ground rules, really kind of make sure we have everything set up for each map and mode. Uh, we're still kind of catching up on certain things, but I, right, we look really good right now. So, Yeah, definitely look really good. I, I do want to, not to move away from that too far, but there has been difficulties with certain squads. Some of the squads at the top have definitely thrown you guys for a loop at other tournaments. How do you try to target a problem like that and actually be able to match up better against some of the squads that have been able to pull ahead on the points leaderboard? I think it's really the practice regiment where we're going to gain a lot from and really catch up to the teams that, are, that have our numbers so far. So I'm not worried about it. Just give it a couple more weeks and we'll be ready. Yeah, and this tournament in particular, I, I mean, is this one of the ones where you say, okay, Huntsman, not a team that we have to worry about. Are, are you trying to get to that grand final? Or are you trying to grab the win here? Oh, we're trying to win this, man. These guys, these guys are ready. They're amped for it. And then, honestly, if they just all play their game and they all play well, we have a chance. We saw Florida last event kind of come out of nowhere and have a chance, and our boys are better than that, so I think, I think we can hang. All right, very exciting stuff because ultimately you have a team that can already potentially grab the W and also they are thinking about the long term. They are thinking about they wanted what they want to do for the rest of the league. We're going to be moving on forward though throughout the day. HQ coming up right after this.